Good evening, Algebra 2. Today we're going to be talking about scatter plots and best fitting lines. The first thing we look at when we're talking about scatter plots is the correlation. Which way they're kind of flowing and going with it. So that first graph that we look at, we notice that it has a general tendency to move up as we move from left to right. So since we're going up from left to right, we know that it's going to have that positive correlation positive correlation. Now the graph in the middle, we have a general flow downward, a general flow downward from left to right. So much like a line and slope, this is going to be a negative co correlation, a negative correlation. Now, on the farthest right graph, since there's no way of fully knowing where this graph is because it's all over the place, we go ahead and say that that is no correlation approximately no correlation since it's kind of all over the place. You don't really know where it's going or what's happening with it. There's no real flow of it. Now, when we talk about correlation, there's a certain variable that we use. It's called the correlation coefficient. It's not actually a variable, it's coefficient. So we use a lowercase r, lowercase r to denote the correlation coefficient. Now, I know that there's an uppercase R that you're seeing right here, but that's just a typo, and it should be a lowercase r. So, this lowercase r correlation coefficient can be anything between negative 1 and 1. It can be between there. The algebra that we see is right down here, all right, in an inequality form. So, negative 1 is less than or equal to r. Is less than or equal to R. And R is also less than or equal to 1. All it's saying is it's between 1 and negative 1. It can be anything in between there. All right? And what this number does when we evaluate the number is it lets us know how close. How close we are to our best fit line is to the scatter plot. So if we have some points, when we look down here at the bottom, if you have a line that fits this pretty well, the points are going to be near 1 or negative 1, depending on the slope. Now, the first one is negative 1. And what that lets us know is that if our points are close to that line with a negative slope, if it has a negative slope and the points are near the line, you're going to be closer to negative 1. You're going to be closer to that negative 1. Now, if the points don't lie anywhere near the line, they're nowhere near the line, then we know that our R value is 0. So if you have all these points down here that are all over the place, and they don't lie anywhere near that line or any kind of general idea, you know that the R value is going to be closer to 0 than it is to negative 1 or 1. So that final one that we're going to look at is when R is equal to 1. And it's when your line that you've made has a positive slope. So if you have these points that are doing this, and we have our line that goes up through those points, and it has a positive slope, and the points lie close to that line, our value is going to be real close to that negative 1. The closer you are to 1 or negative 1, the better. That means your line is fitting that scatter plot that much better. Now I know that that can be a little confusing, which is why we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first example. This example is asking us to tell whether the correlation coefficient is closest to negative 1, negative 0.5, 0, 0.5 or 1. So, what we first have to do is we have to draw our best fit line to see how close this line will be to our points. So there's my line for that first graph, that first scatter plot of A. So, as we can see, I have all these points over here that are pretty dang far from the line. We're kind of spread out there, but we can generally see that downward flow. All right, so the correlation of it is already negative. So I know that my value 
needs to be negative. That R value needs to be negative. Now, since I do have these lines out here, or points out here, I'm sorry, um, since I have the points far out from the line, I know that it's not going to be very close to negative 1. And since the line does fit a few of these points, I know that it will be far from 0. So the best answer for this would probably be negative 0.5. Negative 0.5. Now when we look at our B, and we draw our best fit line to B, we know that we're going right up through there. And I know my line's not very straight, but you get the general idea when you're using the straight edge. So it goes through these points and everything. So since my correlation is positive this time, it's going to be positive. See the blue a little better. Um, it's going to be positive. I know my R value is also going to be positive. So, since my line now is really close to these points, it's really close, I know that this R value is going to be pretty dang close to 1. So I know my best R value is 1. Now, we are going to go over this in class again to better clarify. And we're actually going to show you how your graphing calculators will do this for you and actually generate this R value for you so that you can see how closely that line fits to your scatter plot. But we'll show that to you all in class. Right now, we're going to go ahead and switch from looking at just the correlations and the coefficients of that correlation, but looking into how we're going to make a line or an equation from that best fit line, how we're going to make the equation of that. So there's a key concept that I want you guys to see. And it's approximating a best fitting line and how to write the equation. So I want you to go ahead and pause for a minute um, to try and write all this down just and read it real quick so you can get a general idea but so that I can move on. So go ahead and pause now. All right, hopefully that makes sense reading through it. The main piece is to draw your scatter plot, then to sketch that best fit line, choose two of your points on that line that's estimated, and write your equation using those points like we did in before we took that test. All right, you're going to have to know that stuff. That's why we want to make sure you know that, because all this builds on each other. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look into an actual example of how we would use all of this. So here's where you're going to get your step-by-step -step on what you're going to be asked. So the table shows the number Y in thousands of alternative fueled vehicles in use in the United States X years after 1997. The first thing we need to do is plot the points, then determine the correlation of the scatter plot, next draw a best fit line, and then generate the equation of that line. So I have my table down here, my fuel efficient car, which is plugged in, and it's nice and green. Green car, because we're in alternative fueled vehicles. Vroom, vroom. So the first thing to keep in mind is that zero point for my X is actually the 1997 year. It is actually the 1997 year. So when we move one year from that, that one year is actually 1998, all right? And then these, so this is my years. This is the number of cars in thousands. So this one is actually 280,000 cars, 280,000 cars. So that's not just 280. We're just reducing that number some so that we can see it. Now, to plot these points, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide so that I have room to work with it. As you can see, we have that same table on our left where our years are over here for our x values and the number of cars are our y values. Now, we have this nice scatter plot set up for us. You'll have to actually go through and set these up, all right? You'll have to do that yourself, but this is what you should get. Now, I want you guys to go ahead and pause and try and figure out from this what your best fit line would be, what the correlation is, and I want you to try and write the equation using some points from that line. So go ahead and pause and give that a try.
All right, let's go ahead and work this now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find out what kind of correlation it is. So I'm going to find my correlation. My correlation, I am obviously from left to right going up. So I know that it's a positive correlation. So I'm going to go ahead and try and find my R value now after I draw my best fit line. So obviously I'm going to do my best fit line next. Um, you want to make sure when you're doing this that you have the same number of points above as you do below. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line up through here. And as we can see, these points are all pretty close to this line. We don't have them too far off. So I know that my R value is going to be positive again because I had that positive correlation and then these points are really close, so I know that it's going to be pretty dang close to 1. Probably not exact, probably a little short, but pretty close to 1. And that's my R value. The R value. Alright, so once we found that, and we have our best fitting line, now we're going to go ahead and work out how to find the equation of this best fitted line. So, we need to generate some rough points. So the first rough point that I have that I'm going to use, I'm going to use in pink to show you guys, is this one value here, which my, on my line is pretty dang close to 300. So I know I have one point that's 1, 300. Now I'm going to choose my second point again in this pink. That second point I'm going to do right at the 2 value. Right at that 2 value, you can choose any point. So we could also use a point like, say, up here at 6. And that's about 525. So I'm going to go ahead and try and use that one to see if I can come up with this equation. Now, as you guys learned in Chapter 2, when I'm given a point and not the y-intercept, that I need to set it up in what's called point-slope form. That's where we have that y minus y1 equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. All right, and just remember that that m value is still your rise over run, but it's also the change in y over the change in x. Change in y over the change in x. So, the first thing I need to do is find the change in my y and the change in my x. So, I'm going to go ahead and take 525, subtract the 300, the y value from my first point, put that all over 6, the x value of my second point, minus the x value of my first point, 1. What I end up with is... 225 over 5. Now, since my 225 ends with a 5, I know that 5 can divide into it. So when I do that division, I end up with roughly, anyone know off the top of their head or they have to pull out their calculators? Should run, end up with roughly 45. 45 for that m value. So we end up with 45 over here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this x part in red so you guys can see it. So I get that x value that I have, and when I evaluate that out, I have minus, and I can choose either point. I'm going to go ahead and choose my 1, 300 is the point. So since my x value over here is 1, I'm going to go ahead and want to throw 1 in there. Now, just so you guys can see, I'm going to change to blue for my y values. y minus, since I chose 1 from over here, I need to choose the 300 that's with that 1. So I have this point slope form set up. Now, on this next test, it's going to be important to know how to take this expression and turn it into slope intercept form slope intercept form. That one is going to be that y is equal to mx plus b. 
I know you guys remember that because you guys have seen it for years and years and years. Now, I'm going to show you how to do each of those steps. The first thing that we always want to do is we want to distribute that slope in there. That's always the first step you're going to want to do. So 45 times x is just 45x. We keep our subtraction sign. 45 times 1 is just 45. See why I kept that one value as my point? So that it's nice, simple multiplication. We still have our y minus 300 over here also. So the next thing I need to do is I need to add that 300 to both sides. So I get y by itself. Doesn't affect the 45x because they are not like terms. But when I add 300 to both sides, I'm going to add 300 to negative 45, which is going to leave me with a negative 255. 255. And you guys can go ahead and check my work because it's obviously some big numbers I'm trying to do in my head. But this is that slope intercept form that I started with. The slope intercept form that I started with. And that's pretty much it for this, guys. Doing all this work by hand is a little difficult. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to do it with your calculators in class. All right, we're going to show you how to set up your scatter plots in your calculator and determine that R value and let your calculator generate the best fitting line that it can. All right, so there will be more explanation on that R value. I know that can be confusing. Sorry about that. It's just the way it works a little bit, but it will be clarified in class with the calculators, so you guys know. So, last thing is I'd like to make sure that we realize that these notes come from our book, which reference page would load. There's the reference page. All right, this comes from our textbook, which is written by Larson, Boswell, Conold, and Stiff. So thank you guys for providing that for us. So go ahead and knock them out. Happy face. All right, see you guys in class. Yay math.